watching Over the Back Fence, a production of Neighborhood Falmouth. This is a conversation among neighbors, and today we are talking about unusual jobs that you held. So we're going to start with Jackie. Hi. Um, I, had a, I've, I had a couple of oddball jobs. I had some very normal jobs, like you know, like the summer jobs, like working in an office, doing filing and that kind of thing. But I had an, I had a real odd job when I got to college. One of my sorority sisters said to me, would you be willing to, to, to participate in a tasting for me? I'm working, I'm doing clinical at Heinz. She was a foods and nutrition major. And she, um, so I, you know, took the bus down to Heinz and because they were paying five bucks an hour, which in the early 60s was a lot of money. <laughs> and, and, uh, and I started tasting and I was pretty good at it. Um, apparently not everybody can, can differentiate and explain what they think they're tasting. And so I ended up being the, the blueberry pie specialist, but um, blueberry <laughs> pie specialist, but I was a taster for for H.J. Hines, um, and uh, when and this was back when they were just starting to think about you know, putting flavorings in, in ketchup other than tomato. And, uh, and these were fake flavorings that were like surprising. garlic, garlic or 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 pickly or you know put some bit more vinegar in than normal or um, but they they yeah they, they that was fun um, but they. What I didn't understand, I thought Heinz would be ketchup and maybe pickles because that's what I knew about. But they they, they actually have a, a, a greater variety because they're an umbrella for a lot of other brands. And I, that, that was that was interesting, but it was it was a lot of fun. So and um, my sorority sister took me out to uh, to lunch at down in downtown Pittsburgh at Carl's Corner Tavern, which was. It, which was an experience in and of itself. So <laughs> the, the, car, car, the Carl's chain of three um, taverns started at the mills, the steel, the old steel mills. And you could go in and you could get lunch for a buck 25, fried chicken or fried shrimp in a bas in a plastic basket. Nice. And because what they weren't, they weren't, they weren't making their money off the, the lunches. They were making it off the, the beer. And the yeah, and the drink and the mixed drinks, but the, it was it it was great fun and uh, it was a way to get a very cheap lunch. <laughs> oh, so, Jackie, I have a question: yeah. How long before you could stomach ketchup after you finished the job? Well, the thing is that that I, I didn't you know the dorm food was not didn't have a lot of ketchup ketchup involved. Um, Stouffer's it was the, the people they were the people who catered the dorms so oh, okay and to, but man I it was it was I had a hard time I couldn't look at Stouffer's it was Stouffer's green peas with the mushrooms I'd go into a restaurant and get those <laughs> and I'd be like take them away <laughs> but uh but we it, it, yeah, it, it, it was it was interesting. We we were really spoiled um, when you think about it. I mean, not not every college has Stouffer's catered dorm food, but um, the the the, uh, the other really odd job that I had was again in college. Hang I, on a second. I want to know how many blueberry pies you had to eat. Well, no, they they didn't give you the whole pie. Oh, it, got that oh. it was it, it was always a panel, so you got a sliver. You, know, you were robbed. Probably well, except that oh. you, you, you you have six slivers, which was a good size piece of pie. So it, it occurred to me that for five dollars an hour, which you were getting paid, you could have three lunches. <laughs> um, so I, I'm, I'm trying to translate that into current day. Yeah. You know, like. Like what kind of job could you buy three lunches for an hour? What yeah. you get paid an hour? That's that's pretty pretty uh, 
rich living you had there. <laughs> rich in several ways. Yes. yes. Right. Well, especially since it was it was really fun because because I had I had I had cleaned I had cleaned kitchens too, um, Tom, and I had but I I was lucky. One of my one of the bosses scooped me and said, "I need you on a, on the line." And she said, "Can you think you could handle cooking a breakfast? You know, being a short order cook." And so I I I did I did end up on the line and cooking bre cooking breakfasts on Saturdays in the men's graduate dorm. Nice one. Said. Yeah, if, if you got if you got to score a college job. College Thank boys in pajamas. Yeah. Well, I, I hung over if it was Saturday morning. Yep. And the thing is that my, my first husband was was a, a resident at that dorm. So. Jackie, so, I yeah. looked it up. Five dollars. That's how you be, met? Five dollars would be thirty-five dollars today. Oh wow. That's, uh, that's good money. Yeah. 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 No, it, it it took it took us a buck to get there. Because we paid, had to pay the bus, maybe fifty cents, because you had you had tokens, but but it did, it did take, we had we did have expenses. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So those were your two. No, actually, I, the the re, the re, absolute weirdest is uh, Carnegie Mellon insisted that we took a gym, or, uh, you know, a physical a physical. Um, exercise kind of thing of some kind every semester. Um, oh, wow. and, yeah, and so and they offered they offered stuff like date, modern dance, um, fencing. Um, if it was, a, it was a little expensive, but you could do horseback riding in Shenley Park. But um, the thing is that that I did all the swimming I could, you know, I even took a diving course and I'm not very good at it, but I did do it. But um, I had I had gone up through the ranks and, and had my um, water safety instructor, and the again my the professor or the, the, the gym teacher came to me and said, I've got I had a request that the uh, the Naval Reserve, which was next next to the which was next to the the building that was next to campus, needs a survival swimming instructor. And I said, "You're kidding." And uh, he, she said, "You'll love it. It's all guys." <laughs> she had me tagged. But at any rate, I said, "Well, I'll give it a try." And uh, she said, "Wear your most modest bathing suit." <laughs> and I did not. It's a bitsy, teeny, weeny, yellow polka dot bikini. No, we, we we didn't we didn't do that in those days unless we were really you know really risque but I, I I think I did have a two piece but uh but um at any rate we it was great fun um there were there were about 10 guys in a, in a nice heated pool and in, in, in the reserve building and uh, the only thing that 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 that, that I didn't I did not want to I, I did not want to that you'd have to jump you know, sort of like the part of the survival swimming is the height. I don't even remember how many feet up it was, but I, I, I stood at, the, I stood on the, the deck with a, with a clipboard and said, "Up you go." <laughs> but, uh, but it was, it was, it was fun. I know it, it, it paid pretty well too. So, not five dollars. Um, Great. Well, lots of uh, lots of jobs around young men in pajamas or bathing suits or yeah. wetsuits or something. Hmm. Yeah, probably says a lot about me and my youth. Jobs of scantily clad men. Yes. <laughs> Jackie, you you you. That's Wicked all I can say. I, that, that's why I'm Wicked Mina. You know, that's why that's why I'm Wicked Mina. <laughs> so. Who else has an unusual job in their history? Well, I, I was a, I, I just thought of this as we were sitting here. I, I was a carny for a while. Oh, I'm um, no kidding. Um, so as a kid, there was a summer uh, amusement park, you know, and it was, 
was not tiny. It wasn't like for tots. It was like for maybe kids who were maybe seven to 12 or something like that, you know? So it wasn't like giant roller coasters or anything, but they had a roller coaster and they had a, a Ferris wheel, a Ferris wheel and a, um, and a, uh, um, merry-go-round. I remember that. And then they had a couple of those goofy things, you know, where you sit in a, in a plastic elephant and it, you go around in circles, things like that. Um, and so I, I got the job of running the, the, um, fair, the merry-go-round. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, you know, I could, you know, yell at people and tell them to, to sit down and put their Keep your hands in safety strap on. And then, um, I got to step off the Ferris wheel while the, while it was going, which was great fun. It's, it's a, a trick that I still, um, I tra practice sometimes when I'm getting out of a moving vehicle or a cart, um, golf cart. Um, and, you know, I got paid handsomely for that. It was a dollar. This was in, I'm going to say 1962, one, six, something like that. And I got a dollar twenty-seven an hour. Wow! And um, I had bucks. to get myself to this place, which was oh, all of six or seven miles away. So I had to hitchhike to get there. Um, it was kind of an all-day affair, and then I, my shift was only four hours long. So I made you know a grand total of ten bucks. Um, <laughs> But I did that, I, you know, there weren't jobs. There, for some reason, this is Long Island, there weren't jobs around. The, the, you know, it was very difficult to get, find a job. And I did this for a couple of summers. Um, and, you know, it was, it was, it was re sort of reliable work. <laughs> oh my God. Out in the fresh air, you know, all that stuff. Well, nowadays, you know, people who run those things are a super sketchy group. Well, maybe they were then too. <laughs> I love it. Okay, anybody else? Uh, Grant. So I finished law school in New York uh, in uh, about. Grant, I can't hear you. Yeah, I'm going to lean closer, but you're not going to see yes. my head. Uh, when I first came back to the Cape from 20 years in New York City, um, I needed some quick money. So I saw an advertisement for timeshare salesman. Uh. And I said, okay. And I went to this large timeshare in East Falmouth, which is, I may say, still open. Uh, <laughs> and I sat among this bunch of people and we got a brief pep talk about how the timeshare costs went. You had three phases during the year. You had the best season, which was summertime, which went from, I think, April from May 15th to uh, like September 15th. And those you could sell really quickly because everybody wanted them. The problems were selling just up to the date that summertime start. Uh, summertime started because everybody wanted those. It was just before summer and yet they were like half price. So needless to say, the new guys like me got to sell the summer stuff. And everybody that I met that day was saying, well, when, when, does, when does your summer break go down? When does, when, do, when does the prices go down to instead of 150 a day, it's only 100 a day. I said, well, you know, I really think summertime is the best time to be here. <laughs> Long story short, I finished up the day, no sales. We all sat around in the same room. They all served us coffee. And the head honcho stood up and said, well, let's see. How are we doing for the day? And he picks up this clipboard. He's, oh, I see Mr. and Mrs. Uh, uh, Kaiser, yeah, way to go, guys. For sales today, for sales, it's going to be, they look good in your record. And let's see over here. Oh, yeah. 
uh, Mr. Mr. Smith. Yeah. Oh yeah, two sales. Yeah, pretty good. But last week, don't forget, you did like three sales one day. He said, oh, Mr. Willis, where are you? I went, yeah, not too good today. Yeah, well, uh, you know, is there anybody, anything we could do to help you so tomorrow you can make a couple of sales? Is there anybody we can hook you on to their team and you can watch them? I said, let me think about it. I walked out that door. I never went back. <laughs> Every time I pass a place, I go, oh my God, I'm not a salesman. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Marion or Mary Pat? Well, I didn't have any that, you know, this is a subject I can't really spout out about because I just had babysitting jobs when I was in the, during the summer and none of them were very exciting. Um, they were rather boring. And I remember I got 50 cents an hour. Do you know how long it takes to get money to, <laughs> with 50 cents an hour? So really don't have a lot to say about it, but somebody else. That's funny. Do you wanna go Mary Pat or should I? Uh, I I'll go on one job I had. Well, it was part of my job. I, um, I was working for CBC and um, I was actually working in television and I really liked it. Um, but my, there was a job I really, uh, like I wanted to do one show and um, my producer had sort of said, no, no, we're not gonna do that. And he went to Toronto for a week and I, we were all in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. And I got the crew that worked with me and I said, we're gonna tour all the outhouses in PEI. <laughs> and I had asked around I had a list of some that were beautifully decorated I have to tell you um when you try to go out and like like visit the nicest outhouses and I'm telling you I made these camera guys like shoot inside as well as the outside the nicest one was a Bambi one that was all four sides were painted with the scene. It must've been an artist, paint it with the scenes. Now why, if you were that good an artist, you wouldn't have indoor plumbing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was outdoor plumbing. And there were doubles and triples. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, the little half moon thing, I forget what it means, but there's a meaning to that. So a lot of like the stuff about outhouses has meaning. And uh, we went early in the season. So some of these belonged to summer houses and they hadn't been used that season, which meant there was no smell. <laughs> but by the time the producer came back from Toronto, we had aired it and the powers that be, uh, let's just say something hit the fan. And um, <laughs> go over well. from the outhouse. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It was like residue from the outhouse fitting and hitting the fan. It was not good for my career. <laughs> Did you get fired? Uh, my contract wasn't renewed and they moved me to radio. Oh. <laughs> it's like radio. <laughs> but no more TV and leaving me, you know, without supervision, I guess was the problem. <laughs> You downstairs. They were very imaginative outhouses. That sounds amazing. An interesting yeah. subject. That's, that's, that's funny. Yeah, you'll have to tell us more about that sometime. <laughs> Susan, oh did gosh. you have anything interesting? Yeah, you know, I guess uh, I have a couple. I think the one that uh, comes to mind today is um, I was a, uh, I got a second job at some point in my, probably my mid 20s or early 20s as a um, Santa's a little helper at um, Jordan Marsh up in Boston. <laughs> and so I was involved with, you know, I had to wear the costume. I was the elf. And um, this is like a David Sedaris thing, right? And, um, and I took the pictures and I sort of had this flirtation going with one of the Santas. And, um, but they, they were, the Santas were kind of a gnarly group, you know, and you'd be on break and everyone would be like, having a cigarette and like, yeah, we got to get back out with those kids. And, and um, it was, it was just kind of 
kind of bizarre. And um, yeah, it, it, they, it was kind of an unusual group of people, uh, myself included. Um, but yeah, I guess that's something that not everyone has done. But did you do it for more than one Christmas? No, no, oh, I didn't. I yeah, I, yeah. I think I, I got I got what I needed out of that that, and uh, then I was ready to move on. I think yeah. Okay, well, why don't we call this one a wrap? Um, thank you all for watching. Uh, we hope you'll join us again next time on Over the Back Fence, a conversation with friends and this is a production of Neighborhood Falmouth. Thank you.